my name is Rachel and I'm here today to talk about the books that I read in the month of August. August is a weird month. I kind of read a lot of books in August at the beginning because I was on holiday and I read a lot on my holiday and then since I got back on my holiday I just haven't read. And I went to Lee's Festival so I didn't read when I was there. I was ill afterwards so I didn't read then. I don't know, I think I just, I wasn't fancying it and I've kind of let myself just be like, if I don't want to pick up a book, I don't want to pick up a book. So yeah, haven't been reading for the last like two weeks, but before that I have read quite a bit, so I'm just going to talk about those today. Some things I'm not going to mention in detail because I do actually want to make video reviews of them, so I will let you know which books I'm going to do that with. But the first book I have is Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. So I started this during the reading rush in July and I think I finished it on like the 2nd or the 3rd of August. So I was just kind of finishing this book up and I did really enjoy it. I would say it isn't my favourite of like a children's classic that I put in this type of a genre. So there are a few books that I've read now like Heidi, um, a Little Princess, Anne of Green Gables. I kind of put them in a little collection together and I would put this book in there as well. And I don't think it's as good as those other books. However, I did really enjoy it. It was very different from what I thought it was going to be. I always thought that this girl was Charlotte. And it wasn't until I read George by Alex Gino in June that I realised Charlotte was the spider. I mean, it's Charlotte's web, so I should have figured that out, but apparently not. Absolutely loved Wilbur. Anyone who knows me, like, in real life knows that I love pigs. I just think they're so freaking cute. So reading this was nice, obviously, because I was like, I love pigs. There was also some illustrations throughout of a little pig, which was nice. Um, and I think this is a really good story for children, especially because it kind of goes through the lifespan of Charlotte and how she like reproduces and then, you know, unfortunately what happens at the end of someone's life and all that sort of stuff. So I think this is a great book for kids, but I'm not a kid. So it kind of, it worked and at the same time it didn't work. So didn't love it. I think I gave it 2.5 stars. I wouldn't say it was bad and I definitely did enjoy it and want to read it, but I just wouldn't say it was my fave. The next book I read was my least favourite book. My least favourite book of the month. My least favourite book of the year. It could be one of my least favourite books of all time. I fucking hate it and I'm, I'm still angry at it. It's really annoying me. And it is Nod by Adrian Barnes, which I gave one star. If you went back through my channel and you tried to look, like finding another book that I've given one stars is pretty hard. You have to offend me to get a one star review from me. Like most books, even if I don't like you, I'll usually give you two stars. Like there was a book that I really didn't enjoy called Run in June and I still give it two stars. I didn't enjoy Bees by um, Caroline Duffy in July but I still gave it two stars. It just, it takes a lot to get one star from me and this book did it and I was so excited for it. Anyone who's heard me talk about it because I put it on a few TBRs and I was so excited to finally pick it up. That just makes it even worse. It makes it even worse because the premise is amazing. The premise of this book is that some people just suddenly can't go to sleep and so it's like a dystopian where the society just slowly starts to crumble as more people like can't sleep and as their body starts to deteriorate from lack of sleep. So I am going to do a full review of this book because I just like I just want to slag it off for however long I end up doing a review for. But yeah I wouldn't recommend. I found it very offensive as a woman and also just in general, like, it's just, it's such a good premise that to have fucked it up so much almost seems impossible. So, hate this book. Absolutely hate it. It's to the level where I would keep a copy of this so that I can pull it out in every tag as a book that I hate and the book that I hate the most in the world. Like, it's at that level right now. I don't know if those feelings will simmer down in time but right now they're just like they're going nowhere I'm so angry at this book so wouldn't recommend don't pick it up so to bring the tone back up from that piece of shit we have Lani by Max Porter which I read and I loved so I gave this five stars which I thought that I would I just I loved it so I loved Grief is the Thing with Feathers when I read that I wouldn't say that this is as successful as Grief is the Thing with Feathers I don't think it's at that level but it's kind of like comparing to literary masterpieces like they're both still literary masterpieces even if you enjoy one over the other 
that's kind of how I feel about it. I absolutely adored this book. If you do end up reading it, I would say something that really helped me is that there are these sections that are kind of written in this really weird kind of verse and whenever I got to them I read them out loud and that really helped because they're kind of all higgledy piggledy but when you read them out loud you kind of realise that they're just like ends of speech that he hears from other people and it's just like it's really cool. Anyway the book is about Lanny. Lanny is a little boy and Lanny is kind of kooky, kind of weird but he is gifted and he is kind of He's a special child. He's different from other children. He kind of has this like sixth sense kind of, I don't know, he just does something about him. And we basically hear from Lanny, uh, his dad, his mum, his art teacher and Papa Tutwa who is this he's kind of like a Baba Yaga character like he's someone who's kind of supposed to live in the town but he's an old myth and legend but he's in the book like it I don't know it's cool and I just I loved it so much it's so beautifully written like one of my favorite sentences in this book was this one so he peers into the kitchen of the boy's house and watches the child drinking milk and he sees the cold liquid pouring into the boy's belly trickle puddle pond lake into the cellular cathedrals of his organs into to his bones oh my god it's just it's just written so wonderfully and I just I really enjoyed it I have to say like something happens that's like the kind of event of the story and I didn't love it as much after that happened but it was kind of like I still was adoring it and eating it up and it didn't make it less than five stars if that makes sense it was just kind of like oh okay that's that's kind of the way that we're going but I still absolutely adored it and I would highly recommend this but I would recommend it if you're into like weird fiction maybe like retellings of fairy tales poetry classic literature maybe it's one of those where like not everyone's gonna like it and that's fine but I just I think it's a masterpiece I will also link down below a review that I watched so my brain is telling me that this is his name but it might not be his name it's like Martin Scarcella I don't know I'm gonna link his video review down below he did a fantastic review which I really enjoyed watching even though he had very different reading experience to me and he talks about why he gave that book three stars and why he thinks it's nominated for certain book awards and he talks about how there is like a mastery with language here but at the same time he didn't enjoy the story even though like I love it I didn't mind hearing him talk about how he didn't enjoy the book because the way he discusses it is just it's, it's fantastic it's such a good review so I will link that down below so you can go and watch that if you would like to and I love this book like if you're into these kinds of books you would probably love it so go for it. So then we have some graphic novels which I'm not going to mention in detail because I have five graphic novels here so I'm just going to do a review video and talk about them all in a little bit more detail together. So yeah I'm just going to kind of tell you how I found them. So the first one is Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Marie Kotomaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell which I really really enjoyed. Again it's four stars. I think it is a wonderful graphic novel and would definitely recommend it. Then I read The Arab of the Future, A Childhood in the Middle East from 1978 to 1984. This is by Riyadh Satouf. Would not recommend. I think I gave this two stars. This is kind of a weird one because I don't know if I would pick up the next volume of this because he has done many volumes and it was kind of interesting to like see his insight but at the same time I kind of just didn't enjoy his writing style that much and what I was reading I wasn't loving and there was just there was a scene with a dog in here that made me so fucking mad that when I finished I was like well you're getting two stars now when I think about it after I'm like well it does kind of deserve two stars so I'll leave it even though that was maybe an angry I'm giving you lower than you should get um but like it is horrific so fair enough I think this is just not as successful as the books that I align it with so this is kind of like a Persepolis or a mouse kind of graphic novel where it's going through a real event and it just isn't on that level and it doesn't give us the kind of insight that we get in those books. So I just, I don't think it's the best. Then I read Everything Is Teeth by Evie Wilde and Joe Sumner, which I think I also gave two stars. The two stars are mainly just for the art style. It is really well drawn. And then there are these really graphic pictures of sharks. There are much more graphic and gory uh, images than that, but I don't wanna put anyone off or make them feel sick because they are like 
very 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 gory but to be honest I just find this kind of flat and boring and over too quickly and I finished it and I kind of felt like well what did I get from that so wouldn't recommend this one really and I'm glad I didn't buy it my friend was getting rid of it so she gave it to me so yeah glad I didn't buy a copy of this and next we have Dead India by Hamish Steele and this is the watches test this is the first edition of it and this is published by Nobrow who I love because what have Nobrow published that I really like I think it might be Nightlights by Lorena Alvarez, which I absolutely love. Um, I'm pretty sure that's by Nobrow. So I already knew that I would probably love this. And I did. It's very, very cute. There's a lot of representation in here. And although I think I gave it three stars, I still feel like I would carry on with this. So this is kind of like the graphic novels that I'm not that keen on. Um, as in it is quite fast paced and there is a lot going on. But at the same time we have a hell of a lot of character development. Which is what I like. So it kind of married the two very well. And I did really enjoy it. Oh I missed the fifth one. <laughs> Since I got back from Ireland. I also read Trashed by Durf, Beck Durf. And this is an ode to the crap jobs of all crap jobs. This is basically Beck Durf doing a fictional account of someone being a bin man but based on his experience as a bin man I think he spent a year in that job and sort of the stories he heard or things that happened to him and things like that I really enjoyed this I gave this three stars I read My Friend Dharma by him and I just didn't think it was a very good graphic novel and I felt like it was a little bit of a cash grab because he knew people would buy it because he went to school with Jeffrey Dahmer and they thought they were going to get some insight into him and they don't really think there is that much in there and so I never wanted to pick up any more Jeff Beck Jeff. I just thought well nah I'm all right and then my best friend again like she gave me a lot of graphic novels um, and she was getting rid of this one and I was like oh, I'll give it a try and I actually really really enjoyed it it goes into a lot of information about the amount of rubbish that we throw away every year, where that rubbish goes, um, talks about landfills, the dangers with landfills. It is really, really, really informational in terms of that stuff. And yes, it's talking about America and I'm not from America. So it, obviously there's going to be differences there. But to be honest, like the UK is probably just as bad as the US. It's just that we have a smaller amount of space. So we have to be more economical with getting rid of stuff because we don't have much space because we're an island. Not because we're trying to be good people because no one seems to be trying to be a good person these days. But anyway, then the next book I read was Renoir by Peter H. Feist. This is published by Tashin. They do quite a lot of books. If you go to any galleries, you will probably see a turnstile that has this on. Usually there's one for like every like famous painter out there. I know I've brought my dad one on Edvard Munch before and they usually have them, yeah, on like Monet, Picasso, like anyone who's like a big painter they will usually have a book about them and Renoir is no different. I love Renoir, he's like my favourite artist and so I decided to pick this up and I ended up reading it on my holiday which surprised me. I thought I was just going to buy it and kind of take it home but yeah, read it on my holiday and absolutely adored it. It was such a lovely reading experience and it just made me fall more in love with Renoir because he was the loveliest man from the sounds of it like he was just so so nice and in his later years he started having problems with his hands I think it was like rheumatism or something like he couldn't really paint as well anymore and things like that and he just had a lot of problems with his health but people would come to visit him because he was Renoir the famous Renoir and people would come to visit him and he would kind of just like keep letting them in and kind of I don't know like just being nice to them and if he'd have any like episodes of his health and stuff he'd like go in a back room and just like deal with it or whatever and then he'd come back out and just carry on talking to people and just being like nice guy I just to hear how nice he is in real life as well as just being like one of the best painters in the world in my opinion it was just lovely and I love him very much he's an impressionist painter by the way if you didn't know about him and he's wonderful so I loved reading this I ended up giving it four stars because I think the writer Peter H. Feist he puts his opinions into this book a little bit too often for me and this is more a informational kind of account of Renoir's life it shouldn't really have his opinions in it in my opinion and also I gave it four stars because there are paintings where they kind of go over the spine in the middle and I just find that really annoying because then you can't see parts of the painting so enjoyed reading about Renoir 
like Renoir is always like six out of five stars um but this book specifically and the guy who wrote this specifically I'd give it a four stars um but definitely great to find out more about him loved reading this and then I have one more book to mention that I finished in the month of August and that is Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov oh my god like if anyone at all has watched my channel for a long time like please give me a fucking pat on the back for this this has been the book that i've wanted to read the most in the world for like four years and i never picked it up it was top of my tbr i mentioned it in so many videos and i never picked it up and i picked it up and i've read it and i'm so glad that i read it this is one of the best books i've ever read i was completely blown away by it um i am going to do a full review video because the thing with this book is that it's kind of it sent me back to how i used to feel when i'd read books for uni and it would be like okay I want to study this I want to rip it apart like that's how I feel about this book and I kind of have been doing that and I've been really enjoying finding out more about it and like oh, it's just it's such a multi-layered masterpiece in my opinion like it's so well done so yeah not the easiest read obviously like a lot of people know what this is about but if you don't it is about a man called Humbert Humbert who I would say is around 35 at the start of this book and he meets a little girl called Lolita who he falls in love with and she is 12 i think when he first meets her obviously you know it's a very difficult subject matter but yeah like it just it is such a fantastic book and i really really adore it i have another book by vladimir nabokov called pale fire which has now shot to the top of my dvr so yeah i will be doing a full review of this so that will come at some point i don't know when i read that one loved it we'll say Gave it four out of five stars though, even though I loved it that much. That's just, it's just how it felt for me. I think the end of it kind of loses steam a little bit. Although I wouldn't, like it's really hard. Like I don't, I, I can't pick on anything that's bad. It just, there was like a certain point where it kind of lost steam in a way that it was like, like I'm not as enveloped in this as I was. And so I gave it four stars instead of five, but it's no reflection on this as a book. Like it's, it's it's good it's a masterpiece I, i'm in love with it it's just phenomenal so that was the books i finished in the month of august and lolita was one that i was reading for classics of thorn and i have two more books that i was also reading but i'm still currently reading so so one of them was for classics of thorn as well and that is emma by jane austen i'm pretty much dead on halfway through this i'm up to page 301 i'm really enjoying this but um like I said like I've just I've just not been reading the last two weeks I've just not fancied it so I haven't picked this one up in a little while but that isn't to say that I'm not enjoying it I think it's really like I just read Mansfield Park and I reread Pride and Prejudice so I've kind of like overloaded myself with Jane Austen a little bit too much I think um so having a little break from this has been quite nice I'm hoping to pick it up again this week I am really really enjoying it so hopefully we'll be finishing that in the month of September. And then the other book that I've been currently reading is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. So I am 143 pages into this and I think part of the reason that I'm struggling with this is because I don't find it very, it's not hooking me. Like on the back it says a gripping page turner and I'm just like I don't really get who said that because <laughs> it's good and I'm enjoying it and I like I do want to read it and I like I don't know how to explain it it's just but I wouldn't say it was gripping I wouldn't say it's a book where like I you know I walk past it I'm like I have to read that right now and because I don't have that draw to it it means I'm not picking it up as often but when I do pick it up I am enjoying it so yeah that is another one that I'm hoping to finish in September it's about a boy who survives something really bad <laughs> kind of about his life after that struggling through like being a teenager after this thing has happened and going on from there um so yeah they're all the books that i've been reading in august if you've read any of them or want to talk to me about them please do in the comments below thank you very much for watching and i will see you in my next video